Hi, my name is Charles Bailey and I currently live in New York City, but for the last 33 years I've lived overseas in Africa and Asia where I worked for most of that time for the Ford Foundation. I grew up on a farm in Michigan and I went to school on the East Coast before joining the Peace Corps and going to Nepal where I thought my Michigan farm background could really provide some help to people uh, who were living subsistence uh, lives. Of course, what I found out was that they were very hospitable, didn't feel they particularly needed help, but if I could find things that were familiar to me and not to them, such as fruit trees, they were all ears. So that was an important lesson, and that sort of has guided me since. Uh, listen to people, uh, think about what they say, uh, don't rush in with judgment, and see if you can really be helpful. In the uh, recent years, the Ford Foundation sent me to Vietnam. I first arrived there in 1997. I wasn't too mindful of the war until I started to look around and saw that there were legacies, not the ones you'd usually expect, but out in the rural areas, particularly in the mountains, devastated landscapes, and as I found out, uh, people whose lives had been forever damaged and shortened by exposure to uh, chemical called dioxin, which was an unintended byproduct of the use of these herbicides during the Vietnam War. There's something about my, my upbringing, my faith, that um, has somehow motivated me that when I see a problem and I have the means and the opportunity to do something about it, that somehow I feel obliged to do that. I can't just walk away from it. Maybe I have been unusually lucky in my life, but generally what I put my hand to, I, if you stick with it, you can make a difference. And I think that that comes out of my faith tradition too, that you not only are obliged to do something, but you really can make a difference in this world. It helps a lot to, to be able to empathize, and I think that's what I learned from my faith. For example, um, some years ago I was uh, visiting a village uh, where there was a, a woman who had a house that had been built by the villagers because her husband had died. Uh, during the war she had been a cook for the, uh, what we politely call the opposition forces up in the mountains. And uh, she remembered planes flying over and this mist, this spray coming down and she later developed a skin condition called chloracne, which is a kind of heavy acne. And then she met her uh, husband-to-be. They married and they had one son. When I met her, uh, the son was 18 years old but was so disabled that he could neither speak nor move very much and was confined to bed in this one-room house. So as I, the conversation went on, I said, well, what would help you most? I said, many people like to, uh, would like to have a pig and raise a pig and sell it, and she said, no, I know that, but what I really need is a well. Because it turned out that she was walking uh, two miles each way every day to bring water to her house. And while she was away, there was no one really to look after her son. And she was getting on in years, and it was pretty heavy work and pretty tedious. So a friend of mine who was with me uh, uh, said, fine, we'll do that, and she produced a donation from an American in Vermont, $100, and uh, this well was dug right in her yard. And at that point, her neighbor, who had pretty much ignored her, uh, but who also had to carry water from a long way, said, why don't we provide the pump? And you know, we've just gotten electricity in our village, so we'll make it an electric pump. And so they formed this, 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 this bond. She had the well with the water, and he and his family had the pump and the electricity. And so they developed, a, uh, she got as much fresh water anytime she wanted it, and so did the other family. This to me gave a whole meaning, a new meaning of social security and, and integration, and how what was really important in this story, more so even than the water, was that she was at last part of the community.